All right, Dave. I have two sensors. And I don't know why I, I just so. <laughs> Happy, birthday. Happy birthday to me. I guess Happy they have birthday. my role. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Carlos again. Welcome to another episode of CVTV. I'm here with David Dockin, owner of CoralView, and we are doing a quick workshop on generic outputs. You know, one of the things I wanted to say is that a lot of people say, well, uh, Hydros can't do advanced features. It, it can't uh, do things all the controllers can. And I'd like to say that's not the case. And we want to show you how versatile and robust this generic output is a generic output is almost like a catch all where you know mm -hmm. hydros has all this presets when you go to an uh, you create an output and then you tap on type and it'll give you all the presets of things that that we are familiar with but we all know that one size does not fit all and when something is different that doesn't fit into that preset you need something that is generic enough that you can actually make your own it's like an a la carte so let's go right to it in the skimmer preset we have a water level so we can put a water level in a waste collector or you can put a water level in the skimmer collection cup and as soon as that collection cup gets full as soon as the waste collector gets full it'll shut off the skimmer also inside the skimmer we have um, uh, a depends and the depend is set to my return pump because I want the skimmer to turn off mm -hmm. when the return pump turns off. All right. In addition to that, we also have a minimum off time of five minutes so that the skimmer, once the skimmer shuts off, it will not turn up back on. It'll defer the on for five minutes. All right. And, and why that's is that, Carlos? If because we're trying to prevent overflow. Yes, we're trying to prevent overflow by, you know, when you return, there's water displacement. So the, the return pump, this, the water displaced from the, from the tank comes back. When you lose power, it goes back into the sump. Yep. And that's when you lose power, your sump water level goes up. Yep. You know, so then when you turn it on, it, that water level doesn't go back down immediately it takes mm -hmm. you know the return pump has to turn on and get going and then once it gets going then that water level starts to go down starts so to you go can down. imagine if the, if the water output of a skimmer is buried under water it's trying yes. to push against it's, that and the water and goes just gonna, up in the skimmer and, the dry, and water's going to shoot up yeah. you know again but now comes the the preset i want to add a backup so I had one time I had my ATO failed and it continued to push water into my sump and it made the sump really high mm -hmm. and that caused the skimmer to overflow and I ended up overflowing the waste collector and it caused a mess. So what I want to do is I want to put a sensor a little bit higher on my sump, higher than the ATO and say, mm -hmm. if that sensor, if that, if the sensor ever, which should yeah. never, but if it by some reason turns, it, it becomes wet. I want to shut off the skimmer. Okay, on the standard hydro skimmer preset, we can only have one input, which is the waste, the waste collector slash collection cup input level. If that waste collector comes full or the collection cup gets full, then turn off. But then I have no more space. I don't have anywhere else to put in, use also take into consideration this new sensor. So. At that point, how do we do this? Because now I'm asking for something custom, something that doesn't fit into the standard uh, recipe. So at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to go where it says type. You're going to change that from skimmer to generic. And as soon as you do that, now you have a different screen. It carries over all your stuff that you had on your skimmer preset carries over. So you'll see the um, um, inputs set to one. And under the inputs, you'll see the water sensor, which is on your waste collector or your collection cup. But you'll also see now that you have at the top, you have um, uh, input number and you can actually scroll one, two, three. So I can actually add a second one. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol and add now second input. So now I have the co collection cup sensor, but now I have a black blank input where I'm going to select now my sump high 
sensor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's going to ask me now, all right, this output, this skimmer is going to be on when? Do you want the skimmer on? Do you want the skimmer to be on when the when the uh, when the collection cup sensor is dry? Yes. Yeah. Do you want the skimmer to be on when the high sump level sensor is dry? There's no water there. Yes, we do because it's dry. Okay. okay. Now the the one thing that we have with the generics, and again, the advanced features that you're talking about, Dave, is that on other controllers, you have no option of saying and or or. And or. Yeah. The relationship, the, the relationship between the two inputs. Okay. So think about this. I want my skimmer to be on if the waste collector is dry. And if my sump high emergency level is dry, not triggered. Mm -hmm. So the key word in there is what? And. Okay. And. Because both the waste collector has to be dry and the level sense, the emergency level sensor has to be not triggered. It has to be dry. If both are, are dry, then turn on the skimmer. Okay. That's what it is. Now you could also put, or, but then it wouldn't work because you mm -hmm. could say, and think about this, just, just saying it out loud. I want my skimmer to be on if my waste collector is dry or my emergency sensor is dry. Okay. So that means that the skimmer, if the emergency sensor is dry, but the waste collector is wet, it would still be on because we said, or that wouldn't work. So hydros allows you to use the and or the or. And the great thing about it is that you do this through a wizard week, as you can see on this page, because if you were to do it with other controllers, you would have to write code. Let's go to example number two now, because I wanted to do, give you different samples. So I have, again, I have a cabinet right here. I installed two sensors, door sensors, kind of like alarm, you know, like your door alarm sensor, you open the door and the sensor triggers. Okay. So, so I installed two magnetic sensors there. And then there's a light that I, you know, I, I, I screwed to the top of the, to, to the underside of my, my, my cabinet. And what I want to mm -hmm. do is I want the light to turn on when the left door or oh. the right door open. Mm -hmm. Because then what that means is if I open either of the doors, the light will turn on. So that's what yeah. we're going to do. So we're going to go into a generic. And again, we're going to grab a generic. I'm going to create a generic output. I'm going to go to inputs and I'm going to say two inputs because I want, because each input, the, le the sensor on the left door and the sensor on the right door are two different inputs. And I'm going to select left door and I'm going to select right door. And I want this to be, I want the light to turn on when either one is open, which means, or I want the light to turn on yeah. when the left door or the right door are open. And you can see right here where it says, and, and, or something as complicated as, and, or an, or the skimmer, we said we were using, and on the doors we're using, mm -hmm. or in addition to that, because, you know, I like to make things more complicated and it's mm -hmm. happened to be before. It's like, I'm working on the tank, I'm doing stuff. And then I walk away walk and away. then I forget. Leave them open. Yeah. And then I forget. And then overnight or overnight, the lights are on. So mm -hmm. what I want to do is I want to put a maximum on time of one hour, which means that if I leave any of the doors open and the lights are on, it'll count down from one hour. And if after an hour, the, either, I don't close the doors, the lights will shut off. And then I will have to close the doors to reset the timer. And then when I open either door, the light will turn back on. On another controller, you may not be able to do that at all because you're using an or, or you're using an and, either one. The most of the controllers in the market out there, besides the hydros, they can only do an and or an or, but they cannot do both. Hydros can do both. All right, so example number three is 
I, I made something different because I wanted to do something yeah. related to fresh water. And the okay. reason why is because we all use this controller for salt water, but there are people out there that have, we're learning that they are using the controller on fresh water. The problem mm -hmm. with fresh water is that if you look at all the presets, skimmer, calcium reactor, um, uh, calc reactor, they mean nothing to a you freshwater know, person. Yeah, exactly. Now, you and I know this because we know the overlap. But if I was a strictly freshwater and I had never have, have never had salt water in my life, I wouldn't know what this are and I wouldn't even know where mm -hmm. to begin. And I would be like, wait a minute, I don't know where to start. So <clears throat> that's again, it goes back to generic. If If none of the presets fit what you're looking for, you go to the generic and then you make it your own. So mm -hmm. simple as this. So we're going to create a simple generic output. And here's what I want it to happen. I want the generic output to control my CO2 valve because I want to make sure that in my freshwater planted tank, my pH stays within seven, as doesn't go below 6.8 but it doesn't go higher than 7.3. So I have this range right here. Yeah. This window, exactly. So I need a CO2 solenoid that will turn on because CO2, when you inject CO2 into the water, the pH goes down. So I want the solenoid to turn on when my pH is greater than 7.3, but then I want it to go da, 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 da. And then as soon as it hits 6.8, I want it to turn off. Oh. So it doesn't go below goes and go past that. Okay. In addition to that, I also want it to turn off if my lights are off because mm. you shouldn't inject CO2 into your tank to bring that pH down when your lights are off. You should only do it when the lights are on. So I'm going to create a generic output. I'm going to set the input count to one and the input count is going to be my pH. So I have a pH probe in my freshwater tank and the pH probe keeps track of my pH. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that. And now it's going to give me a pH range. And the pH range, I'm going to set it to 7.3 to 6.8. Now what I'm going to do is in order for the lights, we have this great feature called depends. So what it is, is technically is, is this output depends on the state of another output. So I want the CO2 solenoid to be off if the lights are off. And the depends usually overrides the pH, the, the inputs. That's a higher, a higher hierarchy. So it, whether the pH is low or high, if the lights are off, it's going to override that. And it's going to keep that output off. As soon as the lights are on, then the generic will look, okay, now I can look. Am I supposed to be on or off based on the pH? So that depends on, I go to my lights and then I say, turn off if off. So you just created something that an output that controls your pH based on a range and as well makes sure that you don't inject any CO2 into your tank if the lights are off. So pretty, pretty fresh advanced water. feature, I think. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Whether, you know? whether it's fresh water, whether it's salt water, you can actually mm -hmm. do advanced things. And the great thing about it, Dave, is that did we have to write any code? No. So the hydros is there. It can, it, it, it's, it, it can do what the 20% of people want to do, the coders, the people that understand mm -hmm. code, but it also is there to make it easier for the people that don't know how to code to actually yeah. do the same thing. This is Carlos and Dave from CoralView. Thank you for watching. Thank if you. you have any questions about generic outputs or any question about Hydros, please head on over to support.coralview.com and one of the experts there will be able to help you. Or if you want to, you can always go to the Facebook community group on Facebook and there is a group of users always willing to help. Thank you for watching and see you next time.